unfinished business. Now you don't mess this up. Maybe we're just supposed to like enjoy the ride. I'm still exploring my options. Thanks so much for chatting to me. I really appreciate it. Um, I've I've enjoyed so many shows you've been in. I, I love Arrow, Tales of the City, Special. Like you, you keep appearing again and again. Such great shows. So yeah, really excited to chat with you today. I feel very lucky to have the opportunity to work on them. I really do. I know it's like kind of a wide variety. And I, I, you know, I'm a mixed bag. I'm always like willing and ready to walk into anything. So I'm thankful. Love that, <laughs> love that. Um, so I, I wanted to dive in first of all by chatting about Russian Doll season two, because yeah, I watched all the screeners. Um, I adored it. I thought it was such a great follow up. Um, and you know, the reviews came out today and they're super strong. So congratulations. Oh. Oh, good. Damn. Yeah, they, they wow. this, I like not tracking these kinds of things because it's always, you know, it's a, uh, I guess it's a little bit of avoidance and it's easier to kind of wake up and then be like, oh, wow, didn't know that. That's lovely. Wonderful. Move on. I was wondering, you know, obviously there's been such a big gap between the seasons. Was, were you, was there ever a concern that people might not be as interested anymore or that perhaps um, there might be something difficult with coming back with season two? I think absolutely. I mean, just, you know, we, th this industry, I, I hesitate at saying this artistry because I think it's more of the business side that plays into these parts. But this industry is so reliant on social structure and social, you know, what is going on with all of us in time period, what we are interested in seeing, what we are interested in being entertained by. Um, I will say, though, as well, I think Natasha has a brilliant way of Natasha, Amy, and Leslie. I, it's not just Natasha in this realm, but she, they all have a beautiful way of encapsulating such a large idea of human identity, big picture, big picture things, and and breaking it down into a small, you know, uh, <laughs> espresso cup serving. You know what I'm saying? Um, and in a fun and interesting way, it's exciting and still entertaining as well. So, I think. A lot of the times what they are talking about, what they're dealing with, the things that they want to kind of uh, tackle in this mountain, in this mountainous idea, is so widely uh, relatable yeah. to so many people in a, in a, sometimes in a higher scope kind of way, but it makes it av uh, available at any time. It is, the social structure, I think, doesn't have so much, I don't know, confinement on it. Or, or at least an opinion that feeds into it. They they allow themselves to like kind of let go and people jump on for the ride. But yeah, I did. I mean, just jumping back to the question, I did not. I I didn't know what to expect, of course, first and foremost. But I, um, yeah, yeah, I was glad to see it like come. I was glad to see it as actually having the opportunity. But three years is a long time. I didn't even know that I would be involved with it to be to be upfront. You know, it's like. The whole story could have changed. She could have done something entirely new, and I would have been excited to go on the ride. I'm sure everybody. Absolutely, um, and it, it's 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 interesting because you know the first season it does feel so good in a complete, you know, one off story. But then season two does this magical thing of somehow extending it and expanding on the first season in really interesting ways. I think people won't be expecting. Um, but and, and I think one of the highlights. Um, I hope. So. Yeah. And one of the highlights is Alan. I adore, I, I'm enjoying Alan so much again. Um, and I wondered, you know, your character, he has, he has this gentle, but, but also anxious energy. You know, there's a lot of insecurities. There's a lot of um, overthinking almost. And I wondered, what was that like to kind of maintain? So I, I imagine that could be quite intense um, over a longer period. It is, but you, you know, I, I, and I'd be interested to hear about other actors' journeys on this front, but you start to feel a certain kind of comfort in it. You, you know, even the parts that people would... I guess run from those kind of tactics or those kind of um, uh, human traits seem really uncomfortable or jarring, but it's honestly the ways that he deals with the uncomfort in his body. I, I, think, I feel like in a way it's, it's, a, it's, it's an expulsion in a, in a lot of ways. He's getting it out through those kind of like jittery movements and, 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 and fucking racketed brain thoughts. <laughs> uh, for him, he's so used to it, and it feels, you know, to be damned in a certain way. It feels comfortable, and, and you're not sure, like, whether he's searching for it, where it begins or where it ends, you know, what's which one is in control. But in playing it, 
No, I am not uncomfortable with it because it, it it reminds me that I'm in in the place. You know what I mean? I do. The only thing that scares the shit out of me is going too far. You don't want to take advantage of it. You don't want to sp specifically not a tick or specifically not a a physical trait. You know, my father my father has Asperger's. I've been a lot of people on the, around a lot of people on the spectrum all of my life, um, and that was a big conversation with Alan. I didn't want Alan to be you know, a, a highly versed spectrum person on the spectrum. I, I, I wanted him to be somewhere weirdly hodgepodged in the middle prior to the lines of definition, which I think a lot of us resonate from is just as human being. I mean, we're all human beings. <laughs> um, but you know what I mean? A person who isn't necessarily quoted on the, on the spectrum, but I think we all kind of are. <laughs> Yeah, Alan fed into that, and a lot of that has to do with his physical traits. It is the easiest way to for me to tap into a person. Um, music, something outside of the brain, something outside of thought is is my only route of like, how do I find this person again? Yeah. I don't want to think about them. I want to find them. You know what I mean? I want to physically find them. Yeah. Definitely. Um, it's so interesting you mentioned that he's kind of like in the middle of these things and kind of hodgepodge almost because um. I think that's also true of him this season with gender and sexuality, because the idea of, um, you know, Alan embodying being being his grandmother and being excited about this relationship with Lenny, I thought was such a really interesting facet that's been added. Um, what, what are your thoughts on the way that's kind of been explored in season two? I was really excited by that. I mean, I'm, I'm really excited by that as a queer person in general, you know what I mean? Um, and I'm, I'm going to be very specific about my words here at least very fragile it's not from a place of like i just want to see gay people flashed up you know it's like i just want to see queerness everywhere i don't want to see that i don't like it being thrown apart i don't like it being utilized for a benefit of other people and and also taking away from the community for entertainment's sake as much as i i truly believe there's something beautiful about us laying back and watching a fucking Transformers movie. You know what I mean? There's something amazing about some raw base entertainment. But when it's a people's community taking advantage of for humor, for, you know, uh, to uplift other characters, I'm not, I'm not feeling that kind of shit. So I think it needs to be very utilized in the right ways. Um, that being said, I don't think, you know, it's funny, it's opened up this whole conversation about Alan and his sexuality. Yeah. I truly look at it from a place of Alan not really exploring his sexuality, at least not in a conscious way. He is entering into this world, um, being able to live in a mask, I, I, literally the theory of like a Russian doll. He is the next layer down. He is protected by this wood layer of a human face his grandmother, and admittedly I say a wood layer, because I think he takes advantage of it in the beginning. I think he takes advantage of a woman and a woman of color in that time period being an immigrant. I think he runs a little rampant and he doesn't think about the consequences as much as he doesn't understand he has no control within it. Um, prior to that, he thinks he does. But in the moments with Lenny, it's just like he is enjoying feeling the, the true form of love. And, and exploring that sensation rather than even considering it's a man or it's a woman or anything. He's having fun exploring and exploring his own identity. And where he ends up is kind of not a part of the, you know what I mean? It's like the labels aren't important for me. And I don't think it's important for Alan in the moment. It's the feeling of, of freedom. It's the feeling of literally not being in his own skin, but feeling good in it. Um, it brought up so many conversations within my own mind about trans identity, about being a trans per person, like finding these elements of how do I, how do I make this match what's in? And I, I don't know how, I, I'm, I hesitate at saying this because I really think that it's important to understand um, or, or just, be, just be conscious of the dynamic, but Alan is not a trans person. Alan is not going through a trans identity experience or, or questioning where that goes. But I do think we all relate to that in a sense of, I don't feel comfortable in my own skin for a certain amount of time. I think for a lot of people, it is, it is a lifetime. It is a, it is a full identity. But God knows there's moments in my life when I know I felt something isn't matching up and I can't figure out where or how to make it. How do I feel better about me inside of me? And 
I'm fascinated by it. There's just so much relation in just on a human scope to of like the relationship between Agnes and him. He's trying to find himself. He's trying to find his own identity. He's not been able to find it in his mom. He's not been able to find it from this reflection of his father. His father's kind of out of the picture. His mother is like <laughs> living on just a different kind of energy plane. Um, who is Alan's connect? I have oftentimes related to that just being adopted kid. I love my parents to death, but I go almost still in my year, 34th years of life, questioning what puzzle pieces I can't find to plug into my own soul to figure me out. You know what I mean? In order to help the partnerships, the relationships that I continue on with, it's really fucking hard. And I know that everybody deals with it. And I see Alan kind of going from that kind of a world. He, He's able, when he gets into that body, something connects in a different way for him than it ever has. And he understands himself, he understands humanity, and he's able to have fun within it because nothing comes back to hit him. Yeah, it's, anyway, yeah. <laughs> no, go on, go on, sorry. I'm sorry, I was like, I'm just so interested in the idea, and like, I've been talking about it all week, and it still is like, Russian Doll is such a fucking beast in the sense that you can walk away from it. I filmed this, what, we filmed this like a year ago, a year and a half ago, and I'm still finding things that I'm like, oh my God, I didn't even think about bringing that into that. Holy shit, I hope it's there. Uh, <laughs> um, really, that kiss moment is one of the pivotal ones for me. And I look at it as the same reaction, but two totally different experiences. You know, Alan is... Again, as much as he thinks he's in control, he has no control. We don't learn that until the very end. But he's looking at it from like, this guy is kissing me in a hallway. He's really nice and this is fun and I enjoy it. And is this all right for my mo my grandmother? Is she comfortable with this? But like, I don't know. Either way, I don't want to break the cycle. And I'm here now. Yeah. Let me ride it. Um, I think she's coming at it from a place I like this man possibly even love him but i'm i cannot be in an interracial relationship specifically in the hallway <laughs> in in public in you know east berlin it, as an immigrant like no 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 there's so many issues with it let alone the men that he would have she would have traveled with from the congo from any other region from nigeria from wherever you know a lot of these true groups were coming from it would have been a, a huge problem to a point of possible violence so she's coming from a different kind of fear, but the reaction is the same. And that's was really cool to me in this world. Again, I'm sorry to babble on and on. I don't think Alan's gay. I think he's having fun exploring his own sexuality. Yeah, yeah. No, I love that. Um, thank you for um, being so honest and open about it. And uh, you're right. It's, it is one of those shows where it's just, you can talk for so long because there's so many interesting things to unpack and it, it doesn't define things, but it explores them in a very expansive way non-binary specific kind of way which is which is so interesting to me um yeah uh, well i am my next question is also something that could be potentially quite open but i want to ask about <laughs> i loved in the finale it really it's very it blew me away the kind of um you know the train crashing scene and then the falling into the void and um yeah it was just it works in so many levels and i wondered what does that what does the void mean to you personally and what was it like to kind of film those very dynamic moments on set hmm Ooh, the void just always felt like, which Natasha and I talked a lot about this. Alex and I talked a lot about this too. The void was, and it might be very different for Natasha. That's another part of this crazy ass show that it's like, maybe it's about art in general. I mean, maybe I'm just realizing this now that it, it's all about perspective. It can be whatever you feel like it is. As long as you're on the same path, I guess, as your partners, you can have a different opinion. It's really kind of fascinating and still make the same product. Um, but for me, the void was all about security and safety. It was a security blanket. I imagine it to be kind of like it's a, a denouement. It's like an untying. It's it's the clarity point in our stories and a, a a new beginning in a certain kind of a way, like a fresh start, restart. Um, yeah. I um, and I'm, it's so weird also to bring myself back into this thought to be like, what was I really feeling about it? Um, I remember being attacking it on page, just di this dissecting the scene down to being happy in the void, to realizing that like nothing, the void expects nothing of me. <laughs> yeah. 
and that kind of feeling is beautiful um it's the, i don't know how much of it i personally think it didn't show up as much that last scene for me it's so it's great to hear you say that i mean it really gives me a lot of joy and pause but that last scene for me is not my favorite only because it's not it's not it's not earned in my opinion as an actor i feel like there's certain things that i kind of overkill I think I think Carolyn is brilliant in it. I think the woman who plays Agnes is right on the money. You know what I mean? She comes from that ethereal kind of like, I am neither God nor angel nor human, but I'm somewhere in between world. It reminds me of um, Angels in America. You know, the moments when, um, not as grand, I guess, as the angel flying into the bedroom and shit like that. <laughs> but it is that kind of like, where are we? When is this? What's going on time? I love that kind of shit. Um, but for me, there's moments in there where I try to battle between like wanting to stay in the void, wanting to be there with my grandmother forever because why not? It feels good. It's always protected. I... I have this Alan and myself, but I had this imagination that it was like you can't die in the void, right? I'm he Alan creates all these like rules and confinements to make it probably a little more acceptable to him, you know, for control. He's he's still a control freak even within the second season. It's like you think you can have going on again. I just woke up, so maybe it's my mind right now. <laughs> Not long ago. Um but I'm, I'm also really drawn into the idea that, y you know, it's been three or four years since we've passed. And they've gone through this really traumatic, is maybe an extreme word, but a really impactful moment in life that the universe kind of gave them of this death and uh, wake up and death and wake up. Um, I was really struck by how much he would have changed from this time period, too. And so much of it kept, I mean, this is humanity. I kept hitting a wall because I was like, why can't I change more? Why can't he be more different? And it's like, no, that's who you are. And there is a confinement to like your own abilities. And the void kind of like represents that to me in a weird way. It's like, uh, it's an in-between of like, it's the most neutral you can be, but it's also the blockade that's going to hold you back from pushing further outside of yourself. I don't know how to really explain that. In that it felt like it felt safe to Alan and to me, Charlie, because no decisions had to be made. You know, it was like the void had you when you're in the void. It's not a scary place in my mind. It's yeah. I don't know how much that plays into our trajectory or like our, our, our uh, role as the characters. Yeah. Um, it, not to mention when the universe has been fucking with you for that long, I think as these people are, they kind of start to expect a certain amount. You know, the train hitting, there was a joke between us. Where I was like, should we just be unamused? Like, should it just be like, you know, <laughs> I fucking we're back in this one, I guess. <laughs> um, I love that. They're like, it didn't work. Right? As, um, as Nadia. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like, what? Fuck it, why not? <laughs> Jump like, in. That's so interesting. Um, the blockade stuff in particular, yeah, it's really, yeah, it's giving me a lot to think about. Um, I'm sorry, yeah, I'm like, boo, 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 boo. <laughs> but like, I, I don't know anyone yet who's seen it, so it's it's so nice to be able to talk about it as well, because I have yeah. so many questions and thoughts myself. Um, how do, um, so I just want to, I was wondering, you know, moving forward, how do you think, assuming season three does happen, which I think, I hope it will, and I know Natasha has potential plans she's talked about. Um, yeah, how do you think the way season two ends is going to tie in and set up perhaps this next chapter for Alan and the show. I, I know you're not necessarily in the writer's room, but yeah, how do you see this potentially setting up? Uh, you know, I'm not in the writing's room, writer's room, but they have an incredible staff of women. We have an entirely female writing team. Um, and I will say though, I don't know how much the writing team is involved with this as well, but I know Natasha and Alex, who's our director, both of our directors and Leslie and Amy give each of us as actors playing our roles a lot of control and power and, and, and at least voice within each of our characters. God knows there's so much interpersonal workings. You know what I mean? Like Natasha pulls, you'll wake up and Natasha will be like reading your diary and putting it in the fucking script. <laughs> Just FYI. Um, that, not, that's not necessarily true, but there were so many times in season one where I would, I would, go home from a day of work and call my partner or my parents and just be like, 
I don't even know how, but Natasha put this thing in there that, like, that should happen to me two weeks ago. It's fucking terrifying. Um, <laughs> it makes for great art. I won't deny. Um, God, I... I am I'm thrilled to see what happens. I'm kind of going into it like I did season from season one to season two. I don't know that I have a place. I, I'm not on a series regular contract, surprising to most people, I think. So I'm not necessarily attached to it. Um, that's some kind of like, you know, legal bullshit jargon. Natasha and I are connected in a soul platform at this point just because of the journey that we're on. And I know that she'd be honest and upfront with me. But I also know that like... Russian Doll is more important to me than it is to the story of like Charlie's career succeeding. So it's, it's, if, I mean, I'm, I don't mean that to diminish myself, but if there is not a place for Alan in it, then that's fine. You know what I mean? It's like, I'd like to see. I personally go into this second season even, I wish that we had two more episodes and a little more money to, to go deeper into Agnes's, into my grandmother's story a little more, as much as we do until as not, yes, I wouldn't certainly want to take away anything because I think that would hurt the, the, the whole pro production. Um, but I wish we had more, yeah. Um, so that all being said, my ideas stem from places, you know, if the first season was about death, the second season is more about living and life and how we live it. Yeah. Well, what would the next season be about? I mean, uh, extending beyond that plane of life like what we're expecting afterwards what we're going into in a weird way kind of cycling back into death or this kind of omnipresent like existence or would it be in a point of as like from a big scope like challenge pushing like if you're living now how do you live to the fullest you know what i mean how do you push those boundaries i know i'm still stuck on that as a human being in this world of how do I ask more of myself? How do I ask more of the people around me? How do I help to influence more people? How can I carry my messages in a, in a larger scope? Is that even fucking necessary? Should I just shut up and climb into a hole? You know what I mean? But all that plays into it. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm really still pushing for a, a, an entire oatmeal episode too. I don't think that's ever gonna come. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, I totally agree with what you're saying about um. It would love. I would have loved to have seen a bit more of your character storyline, even like another just an extra episode or two. Um, I love what was done, but yeah, I would love to see even more. Exactly. Yeah. Not without. I, I left craving. I mean, I, I don't want it to sound like I'm upset by any means because it's not. It, it's actually like a really good thing to be wanting more, and maybe it is in the sweet spot. I don't. I'm not an editor. I don't know much about that. Um, but I wanted to know more about. Agnes, the Berlin Wall, and her experience in East Berlin. And I wanted to see how that played in difference to this modern, young, mixed race guy coming to live in her soul. You know what I mean? Like, I, I yeah. <laughs>